This is the newest 4x5 in Intrepid's growing lineup of large format field cameras. And I have to say, these small improvements that they've made in this camera are absolutely incredible. We're gonna get into the specs, we're gonna get into the actual infield usage, and all that good stuff in this video. So let's get after it. So we're in the waders, we're in the Blackstone River, uh, the old Mill River here uh, along the Blackstone. And we're gonna make our way up and see if we can't uh, take some shots on the Intrepid 4x5 Mark V, which I'm super excited about. I've got Ektar, I've got FP4, I've got my 90 millimeter, I've got my 210. I need like a horseman back or something to shoot 6x9 on this thing, that would make it even better. But I do have my Fuji 6, 690. I'm not gonna use that today. Mm -hmm. And I will love all you right hand. The MK5 is absolutely packed with really great new features, a lot that you would see come standard on more expensive large format cameras from removable bellows to uh, click stops and all these sort of things. A lot of these features uh, are super duper handy for those who are just getting into large format photography and those who have been shooting large format photography for some time, like myself, I've only been shooting for two years. Uh, and there's a lot of mistakes that I still make and this camera has certainly helped fix some of those mistakes. Um, one thing that uh, I normally have issues with is uh, getting my front standards plane to be exactly level. Um, so there's not any sort of shift on. I have that issue all the time, but now with some of the new implementations that, uh, that Intrepid has introduced in the Mark V version, um, I don't really have to question that. I set it up and I did what I normally do. I do all my checks and uh, I was like, why am I doing that? I don't, I, I set it up properly. It was easy. I absolutely love the introduction of these markings. <clears throat> Gives you a really good idea, a big, good baseline of where you're supposed to be or where you're at at the beginning. See the lines, set it up exactly the way that the lines show you to set it up. Um, and then if you want to add some shift from there, you're welcome to do so. It's your image, obviously, but <laughs> it's really easy. And it's a, it's, it's a thing I'm gonna have to try to break, a habit that I'm gonna have to break. Uh, to not go and, and check every time because now I don't have to. Thank you, Intrepid. Haunch. Using it in the field is like a really great barometer for, for how a camera is going to function and how it's going to build that confidence that you have in it. Um, and this camera certainly gives me the confidence. It's super easy to set up. It's smooth and seamless. All the hardware on it is a little bit smoother, a little bit sturdier to use. And that's probably the first thing that I noticed when I was out was being able to set this thing up super quickly. In fact, even quicker than the Mark IV version because you're not questioning if there's any swing or shift on any accidental swing or shift. It's just super easy, zero everything out, and you're ready to take your photos. Another one of my 
my favorite features is the fact that you can remove the bellows. It is super easy. The front part that uh, attaches to the front standard is magnetized. So all you have to do is pull that apart. On uh, the back half, there are four screws that you can just unscrew and then you can take the bellows off completely. So if you're somebody who likes to shoot super wide, if you have a camera with a big rear glass on it, you can go ahead and get bag bellows. If you're somebody who wants to shoot macro and needs some super long extension bellows, you can also do that too. But the standard bellows that come with this camera are pretty much all you'll ever need. Uh, and just in case, you know, you have those specialty formats or uh, a specific subject in mind that you're shooting with, this little feature here certainly does a lot to, uh, to allow for some customization. So this is the camera right here, right in my hand. Uh, it looks the same. This is obviously the 3D printed black version. Uh, I actually really like this version better than the wood version. It's just a tad lighter, it feels like, and it really, uh, it just looks super cool. There's a lot of little accent pieces of like bronze or copper on there that I think just kind of make it pop. I'm not big for the aesthetic, but I think that is something that is kind of cool. Uh, one of my other favorite features is uh, this click stop tilt area. I don't know if you guys can see. You hear that click? It clicks right into place, so you zero out, so there's no accidental tilt. Again, another feature that they have improved upon with this camera to make it super easy for those who are just looking to get into it or somebody who has been shooting for a while. You're looking to not make mistakes. You're not looking to waste sheets. This camera is it. Also, uh, Fresno screen comes standard on these things, which is a huge bonus for people who shoot with wide angle lenses like myself. I usually shoot with my 90 millimeter SA, it can be pretty dim in the corners. Fresno screen helps a lot. Yeah, so this day around, Ipswich was absolutely miserable because, uh, well, I can't say entirely miserable because I had a lot of fun out there, but the wind really played a lot uh, into the enjoyment factor of actually taking images because when I took this image out here I was on this plane and I was trying to shoot the island and ultimately it was just so windy that I, I it was hard to hear it was hard to see it was hard to think all these sort of variables go into the difficulty of actually shooting in the field um, the image I'm not totally happy with. I think I could have composed a better image ultimately if I had a little bit more time and uh, the ability to think a little bit clearly without the wind just blowing all over my face. Um, no, I'm not going to cut that part. If I didn't have the wind just like being windy in my face, this is all on me. Anyways, um, but I did make my way further down that down that beachy area uh, into those that little pine grove and there were some really great trees that were already starting to turn colors uh, and I kind of set myself up on this little grassy knoll this like literal patch of grass uh, amongst a rocky beach and I set up the camera and I took a nice little shot and it really felt like fall even though fall is still about a month and a half away at this point when I took that shot it was probably about a month and a half away so um, just kind of interesting to see these call these fall colors already coming through and uh, being able to capture it on the Intrepid 4x5 Mark V was just a, a really easy experience. The wind was a lot less over there, so it made it a lot more uh, enjoyable for sure. But the entire experience of going out there that day was a lot of fun, but it was definitely challenging. The wind was rough, the salt water getting kicked up into the air and all over my gear, that's a challenge too. But the, uh, the camera held up well, I gotta say. Pretty impressed. Another feature is the improved hardware. There's so much to like about this brand new Mark V from Intrepid. The hardware on it has been improved, so there's a lot more uh, stability in terms of like how you attach everything, even all the way up to what you attach the lens board to. It's a little bit sturdier. I feel like when I put it on, there's like no wiggle room, at least on the Mark IV, the wood version, there was a little bit of wiggle. With this, it's 
it's so sturdy. There's no movement, there's no play, even all the way down to like this right here, which is what you tie it onto the, uh, the, the threads on the, on the base here. Super sturdy, a little bit, just small improvements like that go a long way in making the shooting experience a whole lot more fun. Uh, even the focusing knob is a little bit smoother. The ground glass comes standard with uh, a Fresno screen, which obviously will brighten up your image. So if you're shooting something wide, like a 90 like this, um, you're gonna be able to see things pretty clearly. Like I said, I haven't really been using a dark cloth when I've been shooting uh, on these rivers. So I haven't had a problem yet. I haven't missed focus really on much. So big, a big plus for uh, Intrepid on that one. So would I recommend this camera for beginners? Absolutely, 100%, uh, no question about it. In, in fact, even for someone like me, I would have bought this camera if it came out and they didn't already give it to me. And I'm not being paid to say that, but I swear this camera is super easy to use. It is really easy to set up. It is super easy to zero out. And those are really key features when you're out trying to shoot something, it gives you that confidence to create images. And ultimately at the end of the day, you know, the gear is just part of it. It's all about your vision and the projects and the portfolio or the resume, whatever it is that you're trying to work on. Uh, or if even it's just a way to get out and enjoy nature, uh, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, this camera is going to help you do it. And that is the biggest pro for this camera. Now I've only had it for four weeks. I've taken it out in some pretty crappy conditions. I took it out into Ipswich, Massachusetts uh, on probably one of the windiest days of the year. Hey, is my hair messed up? And uh, I had no problem with the salt water splashing up and just all the salt water in the air. Haven't had any issues with it and I shouldn't, I won't. It's a really great camera. Intrepid has a really great uh, rigorous quality control where everything that they put out is usually done very, very well. And if there's any issues that you ever face, you can always contact their customer support and they'll be quick to fix it for you. They always are, they always have been. Uh, and I absolutely love that about Intrepid. That's why they're one of the brands that I am more than happy to to support, both monetarily and through these videos. Um, I just like the way that they approach things. They try to get film into the hands of people that wanna shoot film. It's not about overpricing a camera or overpricing some film or overpricing a lens. It's about making things affordable for anybody who wants to do it. And I love that approach. I think more people, I think more camera companies or lens manufacturers or film manufacturers, they should be keeping in mind that the consumers drive their business. That's the long and short of it. And Intrepid understands that. And that's why I think they've been so successful over the years is because they understand what the customer wants. They provide what the customer wants. They hear the feedback and they make the changes. And that is sort of a, a, an incredible thing to see out of a company like that. So I want to say thank you to those over at Intrepid who have given me this camera. Uh, and I want to thank every single one of you who have watched this video. If you don't already, go support my Patreon. Um, more videos like this can come out. I don't do a lot of reviews anymore. And uh, that's sort of by design. I really want to just focus on the photography stuff. Like I said before, I got into photography for photography, not for gear. So uh, yeah, that's what I've been focusing on. Um, but this is a lot of fun, this camera doesn't get any better than this. I mean, like, this thing is so cool. It was a lot of fun. Unboxing it was fun too, because when I opened the box, it's, it, it came in a Mark IV box and I was like, oh no, oh no, they made a mistake. They didn't make a mistake. <laughs> I love this camera. That's all that can really be said about it. So uh, if you guys have any opinions on it, if you guys are interested in it, obviously Intrepid at this point in time probably has already come out with a release. That's probably why I put the video out right now. They'll have more details. Go check that out. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.
wait to dunk this thing in the river. <laughs> That'll happen. As I was pulling in, I was like, don't forget your dark cloth, Bob. Don't forget it. And guess what? I walked all the way out to the woods. I walked all the way down the hill. I tripped down the hill. And then I made my way out to the river, put my waders on, put my little boots on, everything strapped up tight. Start walking to the river. And I was like, oh shit, I forgot my dark cloth. <laughs> so that's just the way she goes sometimes. This wind is awful and it's way colder than I thought. Let me redo that walking shot. Emily, that blooper's for you. All of that for a marble. Sorry, Intrepid, if I swore. I'm gonna bleep it out anyways, but yeah. <laughs> 